Hey, good morning. Girl Disciple here. Thanks for uh, watching my video. I'm making a real quick one this morning here. Uh, and I want to apologize for my last video. Yesterday, my phone, um, you know, my camera and my phone quit halfway through. And so I tried to, uh, you know, do it in two parts. And I think it kind of cut a middle portion out that I missed. So if it was real confusing yesterday, I apologize. But today's going to be real short. I just want to do a couple things. Remember back when I was talking to you about... Uh, about when I was praying and everything about whether I should start this channel at all. And remember I was having questions back then about the, uh, about the about law and grace. And I'm, I'm always talking about those law and grace, law and grace. Because even though I'm like I said, I really at one time, I mean just in the, a couple of years ago, I mean I was really, really caught up in that grace revolution, you know, and there's preachers on TV that are really, really pushing that hard. And and I think it's very attractive to so many people because basically what they're teaching is is that you get to do whatever you want and live any way that you see fit and still have salvation and, and blessings and all the things of God. And, and that's just not true. Now it is true we are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. We are saved. It's a gift from God. But we still have to be aware of the law. If the law is dead... What law are we going to be judged by? So anyway, back when I was rolling it around in my head if I was going to start this uh, this channel or not, I'm, I, I was walking down an alley close to here, and I'd asked the Lord a question for about the fifth time or so. I was like, Lord, am I supposed to teach about, I know I'm supposed to preach about grace, but am I supposed to preach about the law too? And right then, I mean, I kicked something on the ground as I was walking, and I almost, you know, didn't turn around, but I looked back to see what it was, and it was a rock, and I picked it up. But it wasn't just any rock. I, I'd never seen any rock like this in my whole life. And actually what it reminded me of, well, here, I'm not even going to say anything. Just let me show it to you, first of all. remind you of anything? Isn't that a funny shape for a rock? Isn't that weird? Okay, you know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of in the movie The Ten Commandments when Charlton Heston as Moses comes down off the mountain with the two big tablets of stone of the law. And I was asking God a question about law or grace and I kick this up on the ground. <laughs> so that's pretty. That's a pretty strong answer, and uh, the Lord certainly uh, can answer us in 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 many ways. As I was saying yesterday, you know, being a Christian is all about having a relationship with God. It's not religion. Religion is bad. Religion is when men make up a bunch of rules and then they try to live. That you know, then they're supposed to follow these rules to get God to do something for them, okay? Well, well, well that's not, that's not uh, Christianity. Christianity, uh, you know, we don't, we don't need religion. We need a Savior, and that is provided in Christ Jesus. Now, when I got this answer, I thought, wow, that was a great answer, Lord. Well, then he, he, he kind of pressed on me to, to look a little closer at this rock. So I started looking at it, and you can see there's little marks and stuff on it. And you won't be able to see this if I you know, without holding this in your hand. But I was looking at it really closely, and there's two dots and a little slash, and I thought to myself, well, gee, that looks like, that looks like a, a Hebrew letter. And I realized it looked like the first, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is called the Aleph. And I remember it in Psalm 119 in the, in the Bible. Psalm 119 was broken into sections, and each section was marked by uh, one, of the, one of the characters from the Hebrew alphabet. And the, and the one that I could see right on here, plain as day, was the Aleph. So I went to Psalm 119, and this is what it said. Well, I can't tell you what it said, because I don't have my glasses. Well, I'm going to do my best here, so bear with me. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. 
Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. O oh, that my ways were directed to keep his statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned my righteous, my righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? I'd say that was definitely an answer to my prayer. Now, a uh, couple other th little things I'm going to go over real quick. Hold on. Got to have my coffee. For some reason this morning, I was thinking about the movie, The Passion of the Christ. And whether you saw the movie, or, or you liked that movie, or you didn't like the movie, or anything like that, I mean, it's ir irrelevant because it was just a movie. But, I remember watching that movie... And I had never really thought about, you know, how much punishment Jesus really took for, for us. I remember one time, I mean, I remember when I was thinking this, I mean, it actually brought me right to tears and made me cry one day. I was thinking, what was it like for Jesus when he was on the cross and when he was taking on the sin of the whole world? When the weight of the sin of the whole world was on him, it must have been crushing. And then it dawned on me, what probably really crushed him was just my sin. Just the sin from me alone. It must have been huge. He, he took on all the sin of the world. And he, and he, and he took the punishment Sorry, there's a garbage truck going by. He took on the punishment for all that sin. He took that punishment that was that was reserved for us, and he took it all so we could take on the form of his righteousness. That's pretty amazing. Now, I remember though watching the movie, and I remember thinking, man, did they really beat him that bad? You know, was it was it really was it really that horrible? Because I I don't remember reading in the Gospels anything that was that bad. Okay. Well, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, is just filled with prophecies of Jesus coming that were written hundreds and sometimes thousands of years before he was born. Okay, And that is really one of the most beautiful things in the Bible to me, is going through the Old Testament and finding Jesus through, uh, throughout the Old Testament, as well as the prophecies of his coming and so forth. And anyway, the Lord led me to a few Old Testament scriptures in regards to what we're talking about, to Jesus taking on the world's sin and taking the punishment for it and everything. And if you go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 50, number 5, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5, it says, The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Now you remember when Jesus was flogged in the, in the, in the movie, I mean how they were just wailing on him with their whips on his back. Keep in mind this is written hundreds of years before he was born. It says, I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Remember in the movie how they pulled his beard hair out? I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Because they were spitting on him as they were beating him and so forth. And now, if we go over to Isaiah 52, 13, it says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of man. It says right there people were astonished 
and his visage or, or how he looked was so marred more than any man. I mean, they were saying he was beaten so bad that he no longer looked like a man. And he took that for me, and he took that for you. And it goes on to say, so shall, be, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him, and for that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall consider. Now this is Isaiah 53. I'm just going to read the whole thing. I mean, this is talking about Jesus coming and very specific things that would happen to him when he came and when he was crucified and so forth. And, and just listen, it says, this is Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and we, yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all, of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay. Well, guess what? We're the transgressors. And it says right here that he made intercession for us all. And Jesus Christ came. He brought the word of the Father to the apostles who brought the word to the world. And they put it in a book which has been taken to us. Now we have the word of the Father that came down through Jesus, that comes to us through the Holy Spirit, made a... Holy Spirit makes these words alive. It's food. It's medicine for our soul, for our body. Okay, we saw right in here how thousands of years ago Jesus was talked about in, in, in the Old Testament. Okay. There's many, 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 many other places in the Old Testament where, where it talks of Jesus. It, it, there's the, there's the, the types in the, in the shadows we talked about. There's the prophecies that are directly about him. Um, there's the other times, like in Genesis. Whenever it says the Lord God was in a human form walking around on earth, I say that's Jesus. You know, and if you go back to Genesis, let me find it real quick. Okay, right here. Genesis 2.8 And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Okay, they could hear God walking, walking through the garden. Okay, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. So he, he was, he's, he's all through the Old Testament. Also, I just wanted to share that with you today. A couple little things. Um, so I hope you have a good day. I appreciate you uh, watching my with my videos. I hope you get something out of them. Um, if you like, if you, if you like the videos, uh, hit the like button because that will help more people see them. The more they're liked, the more they're uh, like advertised or whatever. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you want to get notifications. Uh, I mean, and like I say, share them with your friends. Everybody needs to hear the words of Jesus. Grill a disciple.